man. What is going on, guys? I'm back with another episode of a TV movie podcast. And today I got for you Big Brother 26, episode 17. Last episode, we saw Tucker win the HOH, and he decided to nominate Quinn, Cam, and Brooklyn. This episode, we get the VO competition. And uh, yeah, but first, let's talk about the stuff that led up to the events that happened in the veto competition. So let's talk about how Tucker now knows about the collective. So Joseph told Tucker about the collective. And this is a smartish move from Joseph because he's building trust with Tucker. And now Tucker is saying, yo, Joseph's my number one guy. And I think they have a final two. And we saw a couple episodes back where Joseph wasn't trying to honor Tucker's final two. But it seems like the more Tucker's winning, the more Joseph is giving Tucker information. So, yeah, man, I, I guess this is smart for Joseph. He's a, he's a, he's giving Tucker information. And, and Tucker's a, about loyalty. Like, the more information you give Tucker, the more loyal he's going to be with you. And we see examples of this throughout this episode. Um, but uh, we also see an example of Kimo telling Tucker more information about the collective. Kimo tells Tucker that the, co the collective was made up of another alliance underneath it, which included the Pentagon Alliance, which was called the Pentagon Alliance, which didn't include Kimo and Takor. It included other players like Cedric, Quinn, and Brooklyn. And so this already is confirming to Tucker how he needs to watch out for Brooklyn because she's in the Pentagon Alliance and she's in the collective. So... He's like, damn, Brooklyn's been playing us this whole time with having these side alliances and also being in my alliance called the Five Points. So, yeah, he's really gun-ho in trying to get out Brooklyn. And he's so gun-ho about it. He's even telling Quinn, like, yo, bro, if I win the veto, I'm using the veto on you. Do not tell anyone about this. I want people to think that I'm gunning for you. Um, so just, yeah, just act like you're the target this weekend. Quinn is, Quinn is like, yeah, sure. So Quinn is still kind of like not believing Tucker, but he's starting to believe it a little bit more. Um, we see Tucker tell Cam in Brooklyn that, Quinn is a target so they don't go gun hole for this veto and not and not try as hard to win. That's a smart strategy. Um, but yeah, we then see Quinn kind of make a, an error. And he tells Brooklyn that Tucker told him that he's the pawn this week and that Brooklyn's the target. And Brooklyn says, yo, Quinn told me the same thing, that you're the target. So yeah, Qu Quinn... Quinn made an error by telling Brooklyn this information. Now Brooklyn might go with harder to try to win the veto. And it's it, like, Quinn, you just you just talk a lot. You're supposed to keep information like that to yourself. You know, even though Brooklyn is in your alliance, you guys are both on the block. So and there's no alliances when you're both on the block. You guys just have to save yourself. And you guys got to stop sharing these type of information. So if this gets back to Tucker, Tucker might not use the veto on you. So yeah, Quinn made a, a really sloppy error by telling Brooklyn this information. But uh, we head to the veto competition, and this is one of my favorite competitions. This competition is called Hide and Go Veto. And basically, you got to hide your veto. Uh, they're going to give you, like, this plate, and it's going to represent, like, your veto. And if they can't find it, you win the veto. So you got to make sure you hide it really good inside the house. And, uh, yeah, so uh, Joseph's not really trying to win it. He hides it in some bullshit place so people can find it. Um, Brooklyn decides to hide it somewhere inside the bedroom underneath some like clothes i think it's quinn's clothes and then she plays defense by like making it more messy in that area so it's harder to find but th that didn't even matter because as soon as quinn went in the house he looked in his area and found his uh his, his laundry bag and that's where brooklyn's uh veto was so he finds brooklyn's veto and um tucker hit his in a place where it, uh it was like inside a drawer that was also inside another drawer so instead of like opening a drawer and finding the veto you'd have to open both drawers to find it so i thought that was pretty clever uh mackenzie hid it underneath some plant tucker was able to find it immediately it's like he walked in saw the plant picked it up and, and got the veto it's almost like he saw Brooke, he saw mackenzie put it put it underneath the plant so uh yeah um cam i think cam had a good hiding spot i think he hid it inside like some uh actually i don't i forgot where cam hit it i actually don't know where cam put his but i know quinn put his inside uh inside a jacket which was kind of easy to find i think cam found that quick so yeah so people were unable to find tucker's veto um but what, but what was kind of funny was brooklyn instead of trying to look for the veto competition a veto she was trying she was just there to cause chaos to tucker into core stuff like this was her she saw this as an opportunity to get revenge on tucker and to core for um the voting against Cedric last week. So she just messed with Tucker and Takor's stuff. She went through Tucker's stuff and just, you know, rifled through his clothes. And then when Tucker got in the house, he's like, yo, who went through my stuff? And he he, he thinks it's Quinn. So he kind of called out Quinn like, yo, Quinn, I know you did it, bro. Don't lie to me, Quinn. I know you did it. And Quinn's like, yo, bro, I didn't do it. And Tucker's like, man, enjoy staying on the block. And then while all this is happening, Brooklyn is sitting in the background like, 
she's smiling and, and she knows she's the one that did it and she's not gonna say anything she's gonna let Quinn take the fall for this and this is low-key good for her because if Tucker thinks Quinn did this Tucker's definitely not gonna use the VO on Quinn so yeah Brooklyn isn't saying a word and uh yeah so Tucker thinks it's Quinn and then we see later on in the episode that Quinn kind of confesses to not going through with Tucker's stuff but telling Brooklyn um that Tucker was gonna use the veto on him so Tucker appreciates this honesty from Quinn, but he also wants to know, yo, did you go through my stuff? And Quinn's like, no, bro, I promise I didn't do that. If I did, I would have told you because I'm telling you the truth right now. So I think Tucker's believing Quinn and he respects his honesty and he doesn't respect Brooklyn's, um, you know, Brooklyn telling him that Quinn snitched and told her that Tucker was going to use a veto to save Quinn. So yes, Brooklyn did go and tell Tucker before Quinn confessed to Tucker about it. So he, he, he was kind of like, damn, this shows me the type of player Brooklyn is that she's willing to throw her alliance member under the bus. And this whole situation was more telling of Brooklyn to, to Tucker than it was of Quinn being a snitch. And so I think Tucker's just having tunnel vision on on Brooklyn. Like he's dead set on getting Brooklyn out because for whatever reason, he thinks Brooklyn is the stronger player. So he's going to ignore the bad things that Quinn is doing and also focus on the bad things that Brooklyn's doing. So I think Tucker's making a mistake. I think Quinn is clearly the more dangerous player and Tucker uses a veto on Quinn, calls out Brooklyn and Chelsea, and puts Chelsea up on the block. Everybody's shocked. Like, this was another spectacular veto ceremony from yours truly, Tucker. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I think Tucker's making a mistake by trying to save Quinn. And it's confirmed when Quinn says in the diary room, Hey, I can go back to my scheming and lying ways. Thanks, Tucker. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to try to get good with Tucker. But, really, I'm just trying to scheme against him. And... Quinn basically says that in the diary room once Tucker uses the veto on Quinn. So clearly Quinn isn't someone Tucker should be working with. And he's a more dangerous, more lethal player, in my opinion, more strategic player than Brooklyn. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see if this bites Tucker in the butt saving Quinn. Because I could see a, a, a world where Quinn wins an HOH and decides to backdoor Tucker. And we get another epic veto ceremony where Tucker's the one that's blindside. And there might be no AI arena when that happens. So, yo, we can only hope, right? I'm just kidding, guys. You know, I, I like Tucker, but come on, man. He's just, he's winning too much, man. To my, all my Tucker fans, he's just winning too much, man. But you got to respect it. You got to respect it. You know, I can't hate the player. Just hate the game. Let's get rid of this AI arena, man. It's keeping... A, 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 an atomic bomb in the game, man. But guys, let me know what y'all think about this episode. It's been the TV Movie Podcast. We'll see you in the next one. Bless up and peace.